Hey everybody, Joy here. I know, I've been gone for a while, haven't I? Actually, I haven't been. I made a video a couple days ago, but um, I wasn't in the mood. I, I don't function well when my life is unorganized. And since the painters had been here, and I didn't have time to put everything back where it went, before we had to go to Oklahoma City, when I came home, I still had so many things that needed to be done. So many things that needed to be put away. <laughs> so I tried to make a video and I just wasn't happy with my rooms. Not that you would have seen it, not that anybody would have cared but me. <laughs> but I just, I uh, was editing the video and I just thought, you look terrible, you sound terrible, you're talking about stuff nobody cares about. <laughs> So I'm Xing that one out of my life and I'm starting over. So this is June 23, 2023, and my boo bear and pumpkin pants are driving here as I speak. They'll be here about three o'clock this afternoon. So hugs and kisses. <laughs> I am super excited about that. One of the things I need to do this morning is get in the other room and get my flip chart out of the corner of the bedroom where I hid it for the painters and I need to bring it back in here and I need to add some more quilts to it. I know. I know, Philly said you're just as bad as me. I said I think I'm worse. <laughs> so, quilt project number one, scraps. I have talked before, and I know I have a lot of new viewers, and hello, and I'm so excited you're here, and thank you for your sweet comments. Welcome aboard. Now, I, you may have come to Joy Bernhardt, don't you love the name of my channel? When I started my YouTube channel, I knew zilch. I knew nothing at all. <laughs> and it said, name. So I just put my name there. I didn't know I was supposed to put the name of my channel. So I just put my name. And so now, from then until forever, my channel's called Joy Bernhardt. I wanted to call it Joyful Expressions. And I was thinking that, you know, you'd tell them your name there, and then they'd say, what do you want to call your channel? <laughs> and then I would have called it Joyful Expressions. But that didn't happen. So, <laughs> whatever the reason is that you found me, sewing, quilting, jewelry, what else do I do? Cleaning my house. <laughs> Uh, long arming, so many things. Um, welcome aboard. And I hope you don't say, well, I came here for sewing and she's talking about quilting. I do. I this YouTube channel is about, I think there's a description someplace. It's just about my, my life, my day-to-day, -day, whatever I do. That's why we call it usually a snippet of my day. But this isn't a snippet of my day. This is just going to be a whole video that I can get up before the kids get here. Because once the five-year-old pumpkin pants is here, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know if it's against the law to show little kids on your channel now or what, but anyhow. So, project quilt, new quilt project Number one, which may never happen, it may turn out to be placemats, who knows. But I have all these scraps, and I talked about scraps before, as I started to say, in one of my YouTube videos probably years ago. I learned it from Jenny Doan over there at Missouri Star Quilt Company. And if you don't know, if you're a quilter, a new quilter, and you don't know about Jenny Doan, oh my my. I'll tell you the two most important places, the most educational places, the most best teaching places on YouTube, if you're a new quilter, are Jordan Fabrics on YouTube with Donna Jordan, or Missouri Star Quilt Company with Jenny Doan, Misty Doan, and Natalie Doan. I think they're all Doans. <laughs> so, you will get so much information, and Missouri Star Quilt Company has a daily special which is what got me in trouble to where I have way, way, way too many jelly rolls and too many um, layer cakes and too many charm packs. And I'm thinking about cutting those up and doing this very thing with those. Why not? I have them and I need to be used. 
So this is called, what is it called actually? You use your scraps. It's not called a scrap quilt. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but I'll, I'll think of it. You know, I always think of it, and then I'll put it up here somewhere. So you use your scraps. I've decided to make 16-inch square blocks. Why did I decide that? Because this got 16 inches long on one side. <laughs> I thought, well, I might as well make it 16 inches long on the other side. So here's my 16-inch scrap block that I made. I didn't have time to really do anything, and these scraps were all over the place from me making my um, block of the month with Edita Sitar, the season in blue, seasons in blue, or season in blue, something like that, block of the month, and so I've got scraps absolutely everywhere, <laughs> and I've been keeping them in a little box. So I thought, you can tell, these are all her fabrics. I thought, why don't I just use them and make one of those scrap blocks up? <laughs> so, this is it. And isn't it cute? I think it's cute. I like it. So it's not going to be like this in the quilt. What you do is you do half square triangles or quarter square triangles or cut it in strips. Or you can just make this be your block if you want to. It might look good with sashings. I don't know. It probably will never ever get finished. But I just wanted to show you in case any of you want a scrap project. Oh, I'll tell you another lady who's really good. Really good. She's a little redhead lady. Is her name Brenda? Brenda. Her YouTube channel is Conquering Mount, M-O-U-N-T, Scrap More. Conquering Mount Scrap More. Hello, Brenda, if you're watching me. I think she's so big now. Her channel's grown so much, she doesn't watch anybody else anymore. But very, very good. And she makes, I think she makes all her quilts out of scraps. So check that out. So that's new quilt project number one. <laughs> I was in Oklahoma City. Jerry and I both had doctors. My doctor appointment was very early Monday morning, eight o'clock. So we were all done with my doctor at 9.30. So we had the whole rest of the day to do something. So we went to the bookstore for several hours. You know how I love to do that. And somehow this book came home with me. <laughs> It got out of the bookstore somehow <laughs> and came with me because in it is a quilt. Now, it's no big deal quilt. nothing really that special about it other than I loved the colors in it. The colors in it are sand like a beach and blue like an ocean. It's not an ocean. It's not a beach. <laughs> but for some reason, I liked it. And I have been wanting to make, I have a quilt in the RV, I made it when we first got the RV, RV number one, it's been in all three of our RVs now, but I want to have several quilts to put in there so we can change them through the seasons and hopefully we'll be traveling a lot more in it now that Jerry's sling is off permanently and he is in the exercises now where he has to actively move his arm up and down. So he's doing real good. So once he gets his arm fixed, Hopefully, we'll be going a lot more places. So let me try to show you up close. It's called Sand Dunes. That's more than one dune. Sand Dunes. Focus. How's that? Is that a good focus? Now, do you see the blue? Let me show you the bedspread. This is what I really liked. Do you see the blues and the tan colors? Those pieces are paper pieced. And I really like paper piecing. And I thought it's just got one little square for all the paper piecing in the whole quilt. Let me show you it. Look at that harmless little thing. How hard could it be to learn to paper piece with that? three pieces in it. Number two and number three are the same color. Number one is a different color. I have to make 200 of these for a king size quilt. <laughs> but for some reason, I thought that would be fun. <laughs> I'm thinking trips in the RV and having a stack. Here's all of my copies. You take your little square and you copy it 
on paper piecing paper. The paper piecing paper I am using is not that. I started out with one called foundation piecing. It was okay until I ran out of it and I had some Carol Doak paper piecing paper. And that's what this beige one is. It is so easy to tear. So easy. Here's, let me show you the difference. The foundation is this one. It's white. It's not like copy paper. You don't want copy paper. And it tears, see, not super easy. But once you put the stitches in it, I guess it tears easy. But this stuff from um, Carol Doak, it tears, look at that. You can hardly keep it together. I need to make sure Keith, uh, Becky Thompson's husband Keith, knows about this Carol Doak paper because it is nice. So what I did was I made one copy of this. I scanned it. Then I made it be four to a page. Then I will cut this apart and I will have a mountain of these squares. You don't cut them. Let me see if I can explain this to you. For those of you who are afraid of paper piecing, don't be. You don't cut these on this dotted line. See the ants? Yeah, I'm going to cut these between and between. And so every block will have extra paper around it. You want that. Don't ever cut it. You don't cut it on these dotted lines until you have all your fabric attached to it. The fabric goes over. This is your quarter inch seam allowance and your fabric has to cover that too. Okay, so cut those all apart. I have them separated by 100 for browns and 100 for blues and this many for extras in case I mess up. <laughs> Does that ever happen? <laughs> Oh heavens, and I'm using Wonder Clips. All right, so here one is. Let me show you this one that's done. See the paper is still on the back. This is number, what number is that? This is number three, this is number two, and this is number one. So I figured out how big a piece of fabric I needed to cut for each of these areas, and I wrote it down. It's over there on that white paper that I showed you that I copied to start with and so I will cut a whole big stack of pieces to have ready to put into these squares rectangles I think it's a square see so what you do is this the part you can see although you can't see it very good <laughs> that's one reason I redid it I, this was the first one I copied and it came out so light I couldn't even see it so I use it for a sample. But this is number one, number two, number three. And so you look at the front. This is the front. This is the front. If it was darker, you saw it a minute ago where it was darker. Your material goes on the back with the back side of the material facing the paper. Does that make sense? Fun, fun, fun. Last night I watched about a 30 minute video from Carol Doak. I think she was the first big time paper piecing person and she's made a zillion paper piecing patterns but I don't care for her patterns. Like they're all stars and weird stars. I, I, I'm not crazy about them. You might be. But I had a video of hers that I had paid $20 for and if I watched it before I forgot. So I watched it yesterday. I liked everything she did, and I did everything that she did. I must have remembered it, except when she gets all done, she doesn't tear the paper off. She doesn't tear the paper off until the entire quilt is done. I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't want to tear this paper off the entire quilt. I want it off before I ever put the block in the quilt. So that might be one difference. I might find out, hey, you should have left all the paper. I've done this before. But I can't remember 
leaving the paper on until the quilt was done. I, I just can't see doing that. I mean, the block is perfect. It's perfectly sized. It's all sewn. Look, this is the um, foundation paper, I think. See? It tears off pretty easy. You sew it with, she uses a 90-14 needle. I'm not doing that because I don't want to mess up my fabric with giant holes in it. But use your stitch length at 1.5 and then that perforates it. See, it perforates it. See how easy that came off? And that was the foundation. Hers comes off even easier. So there's my block without the paper on it. So that's paper piecing. <laughs> yes, it is. So let me show you this, of course. You saw the picture of the quilt. The picture I showed you was just a lap size. I think I'm making a king size. So I bought this for the tan. Remember, this is the sand. So we've got tan sand and cream sand in the background. So this is the tan sand, I think. This is the ocean. I went to Oklahoma Quilt Works. By the way, I got in the car with this magazine. We left the bookstore, and I told Jerry, I said, is there any way you would take me to the quilt store? I really, really need you to be with me. <laughs> Which I should only quit. <laughs> I did not told him that. I really need you to be with me, and it's true, because you are so good with colors. And I want you to help me pick the colors. Well, the quilt store did not have a lot of batiks at all. I would have done it all in batiks. They didn't have hardly any batiks. In fact, they had, I'd say, less than half the fabric they used to carry. Turned out I was the only one in the store, me and Jerry. And so I had both clerks all to myself, but the one clerk helped me the most. And she was new there. I didn't remember her from the past, but the nicest, nicest lady. But I said, my goodness, why? Where did all the fabric go? She said, well, it happened during COVID. She said, for the longest time, we just couldn't get it. So I said we'd order it and it would never come, or you couldn't even order it. So I hope they get back to uh, full stock. All right, so this is the tan. This is the cream, or the light-colored sand. See? Dark sand, light sand, and ocean. Even though it's not a beach, it's not a boat. Why didn't I put this on the bed? This is way too small for the bed. <laughs> so... The only other thing I had to have, and I got an extra yard of this just in case. Oh, I decided I might do the binding out of this, so I got more of that. The background. You have to have a background. So this is a batik, and this is my background. See? Background, sand, sand, background and ocean. <laughs> four pieces. That's another reason I liked it. You only had to have four colors. So I thought, oh my gosh, I can do four colors in the coach. So I will pre-cut everything. I will not pre-wash. I do not pre-wash quilt fabric. I pre-wash all fabric I'm going to make to wear. I do not pre-wash quilt fabric. I used to because I thought there was some kind of law that said you had to. This is from the quilt store. I said, do you have a bag? And she said, we recycle. And so she reached under the counter and she got me this. I'm like, what does recycling have to do with having a Cold Stone Creamery bag? I don't know, but I really like the bag. <laughs> so glad to have that. What does that mean, she recycles? They recycle. Oh, so I guess people bring bags to them and then they reuse them. That must be what they mean. So I could like take all my bronze bags in there maybe. I don't really know. <laughs> okay, I don't really have any other things to snip it with you. <laughs> this is pretty much it for today. I have been vacuuming and dusting and cleaning vents. You know those vents, those air vents where you're air conditioning and heat go back up in the ceiling and do a vent. Oh my goodness. I looked up at the one outside our bedroom today. It looked like a mattress had exploded on it or something. <laughs> I told Jerry, this may be why my nose doesn't quit running. <laughs> so I got out my vacuum and put all the attachments and cleaned it really, really good. 
And I have done that before. Have you ever done that before? Yes, I have done it before. But it's not one of those things I go around paying attention too much. So I got that done, back in the kitchen, vacuumed the dining room, vacuumed the laundry room, did all the laundry, went shopping yesterday and bought all kinds of goodies for them, you know. <laughs> when you have company, you have to buy stuff for them, right, to eat. I mean, you just can't have your normal nothing to eat. So the little grocery store in town is called Super C, and I hardly ever go there because their prices are expensive, but it's handy. And they had these little containers of baby blueberry muffins and baby poppy seed lemon muffins. I think there was a dozen in each case, and the case is just like this big. I mean, they are really little. So I got home and I thought, you know, I should taste one of these. You know, I hate to have the kids eat these and they don't taste good. So I've had three poppy seed and two blueberries. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst thing about it. The worst thing. Because I just don't buy it. And then if it's not in the house, then I can't eat it. But they better get here sooner. They're liable to all be gone. Okay, dear ones. I'm going to let you go. My mind is on the kids. I really can't concentrate on any of this. And they don't even come up here. You know, this is my space. And they don't even come up here. We'll be downstairs. We'll be on the boat. We'll be outside. We'll be at the ponds. So I'll just basically just forget about this till they go home Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't forget about you, I promise. I'll be back as soon as I can be. Hopefully, something to show you. Oh, I didn't win um, the Fit and Ice ABC Challenge again. I tell you, it's always somebody. It seems like I'm the first to put something up. And I'll think, oh, everybody loves it. Everybody thinks it's really great. And it'll go down to the last day. And I'll be still be the only one there. Maybe a couple days before, two or three will pop up. But at the last minute, there's always a person who puts up the most amazing thing. I mean, she will have made a jacket and a blouse and a skirt and a purse and a hat. And who knows what <laughs> So I still haven't won. But I've had fun doing the ABC challenge with Fit and Ice. We're up to G now. I don't know if there's even any G garments, and I don't know that I'll even make one. Maybe I'll just quit doing it, because it does take a lot of my time, and I need to finish some quilts. And I know you will agree with me on that. <laughs> Bye for now. Y'all have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you next week.